With the deal on Iran's nuclear program reaching a nervous endgame and multiple wars raging in the Middle East, an international deal on Iran's nuclear program has perhaps never been so important. But how did we get here? It goes back to 2002, when it was revealed Iran was building undeclared nuclear plants. Those included a centrifuge plant for enriching uranium and a complex for making heavy water, which is used in the production of plutonium. A deal that suspended uranium enrichment was reached in 2003, but broke down a couple of years later. Iran's program has since expanded. In return, Western sanctions have been tightened. Israel has repeatedly warned that it would sooner take military action than allow Iran to close in on nuclear weapons capability. We must all stand together to stop Iran's march of conquest, subjugation and terror. An interim deal was reached in 2013, freezing both Iran's enrichment and the sanctions against them. That deadline for a permanent deal was extended to March 2015. But what are the issues? The deal is likely to limit the number of centrifuges and the amount of low enriched uranium Iran has available. That's to reduce breakout capacity, the amount of time it would take Iran, in theory, to produce a bomb. International Atomic Energy Agency inspectors would need better access to make sure Iran doesn't create a covert weapons program. Research and development may also be limited. In return, Iran wants economic sanctions lifted. Those include UN sanctions, an EU embargo on Iranian oil, and a block on an international payment system called SWIFT. Iran's economy is massively dependent on uh, oil and the uh, exports of oil and that's why the EU embargo uh, took a massive toll um, on Iran. Ordinary Iranians were hurt uh, because of banking restrictions, for example. Uh, there was no way to send or receive money from uh, or to Iran. And uh, people like students or ordinary Iranians, or people who needed medicine, for example, had problems sending uh, or receiving money. Much of the negotiation has focused on how and when those sanctions would be lifted. So why has a deal taken so long? Most of the countries around the table have an incentive to get the deal signed. France has taken a tough approach, perhaps because of its ties with the Gulf Arab states. In the US, some Republicans want to avoid endorsing one of Barack Obama's main foreign policies, regarding it as appeasement. But what about Iran? The current negotiations is very important for the administration of Hassan Rouhani. He was um, elected to office primarily because he promised that he would end sanctions and he would have better relations with the West. And if he fails to do that, it would be very difficult for him to survive in the current atmosphere in Iran. Hardliners are circling like vultures in Iran uh, to see him fail. Power brokers in the Middle East also have their concerns. Saudi Arabia believes an agreement could further upset the Sunni-Shia balance in the region. Israel has long portrayed the Iranian program as an existential threat. If the deal is a success, it could reduce the threat of another war in the Middle East. It could thaw US-Iranian relations, which have been frosty for decades at best. That could lead to better cooperation in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And in Iran, it could strengthen the hand of pragmatists like President Rouhani, who want to re-engage with the West. This is one of the great untold stories of the Iraq war. How, just over a year after the invasion, the United States funded a sectarian police commando force that set up a network of torture centers to fight the insurgency.